Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video we are going to talk about the chapter 5 of the book The Origin of Most Problems. So, welcome back. The question is now, how can we fight this trade-based society? And you know, we have to make people aware that trade is the origin of most problems and I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. And second, we need to make people aware that we really need to change something because you know, there are people around like Steven Pinker who say, the world is fine, we do not need to intervene. Because he is arguing, okay, Trump superhero, whatever you presented thus far is true, it's factual, and let's say that the crap you showcased is indeed the result of trade, but despite that, the world is getting better slowly but surely, and I'll prove it to you with facts. He is arguing, 30 years ago there were 23 wars and 60,000 nuclear weapons, today there are only 12 wars and 10,000 nuclear weapons. He is also saying about poverty, 200 years ago 90% of the world's population lived in extreme poverty, 30 years ago only 37% of the population and today only 10% of humans live in extreme poverty. You see, that's progress is arguing. Even crime is dropping down. 30 years ago in the US there were 8600 homicides per 100,000 people and today there are 5300 homicides per 100 people. Americans are emitting 21 million tons of particular matter and 4 million tons of SO2 today. But 30 years ago it was 35 million tons of particular matter and 20 million tons of SO2. He is saying even health improved. 250 years ago life expectancy was around 30 and now it's 70. Democracy is on the rise. Today two thirds of all people live in democracies. And he is saying there have been 85 autocracies 30 years ago and only 60 today. Literacy is also rising with 90% of the world's population below the age of 25 being able to read and write. You know what else he's saying? In Europe and the US people worked more than 60 hours per week in the not so far away past but today they work fewer than 40 hours. Even house chores are less of a burden today due to washing machines, vacuum cleaners and so on. They drop from 60 hours a week to less than 15 hours. And overall happiness has increased in 86% of all countries in the last decades. Is that enough for you Mr. Trump? And the Trump superhero says, I have two answers for you. First you are wrong, second you are right. Because he is arguing, you are wrong Stephen. Statistics may be very misleading. Less wars and less weapons today does not mean less destructive power at all. Today weapons are way more sophisticated than 30 years ago. And as for wars, today they are played at a different level with trade wars being the preferred ones where sanctions are imposed on countries slowly impoverishing their population. But Stephen, you want better statistics in terms of wars? Why choose the past 30 years? Let's look at the past 600 years from 1400 to 2000. And as you can see total death rates in wars increased a lot from 1600 to 1900 then started to drop it is true and yet it is not lower than it was 1400. Actually the total number of conflicts increased quite a lot from 1800 onwards. For sure it is true that today there are a lot more people alive and thus relative to the population there are far less people being killed in wars, however we are not doing better in terms of the overall number of humans being killed. The Trump superhero also argues that terrorism is on the rise. He's saying interestingly and sadly that terrorist attacks worldwide have increased over the past 40 years dramatically. 
174 deaths in 1970 and 26,445 in 2017. This is a mind-blowing 15,000% increase in deaths. And in terms of injuries resulting from terrorist attacks, there is a staggering 491,500% increase from 1 in 1970 to 4916 in 2017. Not only that, but terrorist attacks have spread around the world. Here he shows us a graph where we can see the terrorist attacks from 2012, 2013, 2014 and 15 and 16 and 17. The Trump superhero continues, say we noticed that crime decreased over time, but is it because people have more access to stuff or is it because it is more difficult to steal nowadays with so many security measures in place? These two scenarios portray a very different picture of progress. He is saying, like you say, 200 years ago 90% of the global population lived in poverty and now only 10%. But say 200 years ago humans had no means to feed most of their people but today they throw away 30 to 50 percent of all edible foods when millions are dying of starvation every year plus today we have so many empty homes and such stuff of all kinds which situation is worse and then he's also saying that um, it's tricky or there are many problems with this measurement of poverty because you know extreme poverty is measured when you earn less than $1.90 per day but what about the people who earn $1.91 per day? I mean they are extreme poor as well so it's really tricky with these things and he is saying on top of this how many people live with 10 times more money than that but are in debt and how many live with a lot more than $1.90 per day in tribes where prices are so high that even $10 a day amounts to nothing. How many homeless people are not recorded as homeless? How many have phones but unable to have a medical insurance? How many can barely pay their rent and take care of their kids? So there are too many factors to take into account when you measure poverty or being happy. So many people have a phone, a fridge, a health insurance, a house and a car, yet they feel very poor and depressed because of living in a society that is competitive, that teaches them they never have enough and makes them compare their situation to others who have more. You know, even the rich are poorer than the richest and in our society that seems to matter a lot to people's mental health. This constant comparison of wealth. So, the Trump superhero continues with a statistics about suicide and he is saying it is true that in most tribes suicide rates are dropping yet in some it is rising while in several we see not so much difference over the past 60 years but it still begs the question why in a society that has more stuff than we can ever need or want millions still decide to give up for good and kill themselves maybe because that stuff or those goods are not available for everyone but only the few Another statistics is about um, the statement most people can be trusted. So people have been asked, do you agree that most people can be trusted? And surprisingly, China was on the first place with more than 60% of the people being asked um, agree with that. But you know, most tribes that are there, um, like only 40% agree in Japan and in the Philippines only I think 3% uh, agree with the statement. So yeah, like we live in a world where most people say that you cannot trust most people. Then he shows Stephen the statistics about obesity and you know obesity is on the rising and the Trump superhero is saying it rose from 5% in 1975 to 12.8% in 2014. That's a 2% increase every 10 years. Thus, in 50 years, we'll see like 22.8% of the world population being obese. That's a lot. 
and also meat production and consumption is rising and you, we know that it comes in hand with many problems like for example destruction of the environment or also um, contributing to climate change and all that so yeah it's tricky and on the last page about the, <laughs> the debunking um, Stephen he is saying Autocracies, democracies or whatever crises are just a verbal masturbation that is not even worth my time. I mean, where in the world is this democracy where people vote and have choices? If you mean they have like three to four name choices for political parties that are all the same as they are influenced by big business, then sure, call that a choice, but that's all it is. Politicians have been chewing the same gum for the past hundreds of years. It has become tasteless. And I think right now even there is or there was yesterday the election in the US like I think Joe Biden and Donald Trump and you know it's just a big shit show. Like you have those two choices either Biden or Trump. Of course probably Trump is worse but you know come on like what the fuck. It's just ridiculous what's happening there. It's like, do you choose Burger King or McDonald's? <laughs> and he's saying the Trump superhero. And here's a map of people who paid bribes in the last 12 months. So as you can see all around the world, people are bribing other ones. And yeah, it's just showing these political systems are not working. It's fucked up. Um, he's continuing with literacy or education in today's society probably means that these literate and educated humans are better at becoming charlatans and thieves. It's like being happy that more and more people can talk but what matters is what they are talking about. Pretty much all rich people, lawyers and politicians are literate and educated with diplomas but is that what we want? And the Trump superhero is continuing and people spend less time at work and doing house chores? Well, that's perhaps because pretty much any media from online to offline is responsible for that free time occupation, incarcerating people's attention to make a profit. That's what Facebook and YouTube and all these um, companies do where they want as much attention from you as possible to show you ads and all that. But we talked about that already. So, and you know traffic, I'm sure today people spend a lot more time in traffic than they did in the past. Like in traffic jams for example or in the city traffic and all that. And the Trump superhero says, and Steven, let's not brush aside the fact that in today's society where we can pretty much automate and replace all jobs with machines, people are still working 8 hours per day five days a week just to trade for the abundant stuff that we produce and that's just ridiculous i also want to showcase that we have a book about how we can automate um, pretty much the whole world and um, boring monotonous and dangerous work and it's called automated autonomous world maybe i can also uh, make some videos about that book it is uh, super interesting but yeah let's um, leave this for the future and um, the last point the Trump superhero says is let's not talk about pollution because the fact that perhaps pollution has decreased in America is irrelevant when climate change is going to rape us all into extinction despite having so many technological solutions to it that are not being implemented due to our trade-based society that holds people's initiatives in limbo. So I think the Trump superhero debunked the Steven Pinker pretty well. He's saying stats, stats, stats Steven. They can say a lot and a lot less. The world is not so simple. But hey, he's saying sure, maybe you are right overall. Maybe indeed the world is getting better. I'll give you that, thanks but it is still pointless. The amount of crap that I presented so far is just a tiny bit of it all. And even if you are right, we still have a trillions of problems on our hands. If the world is improving, as you say, then it is too slow to save us. 
Regardless if you are wrong or right Stephen, trade is still creating a lot of misery and in a lot of ways that those statistics do not take into account. From data trade to social credits, from dumbing down information and locking down the abundant digital world, to the rising inequality, planned obsolescence and so much more. So yeah, there's just no way around that trade thing. It just fucks things up and that's what we argue all the time in this book. The Trump superhero now focuses on the illusion of progress. Um, basically, you know, Apple and Microsoft and all those big tech companies, they have a brilliant marketing um, section or people working there. And you know, they make it just cool that people have um, or people buy those shiny 1000 euro phones which basically have the same technological skills as a 200 euro phone. So that's explained here and you know most people don't even need a highly sophisticated or capable phone because they are just browsing the internet. Yeah basically people use their smartphones mainly to text call, watch and upload videos and photos and buy stuff. Super light tasks that do not require a very powerful smartphone. But you know, it has just become a status symbol. Um, yeah, just like, uh, like a really fancy car, which is also just a status symbol in our world. Completely fucked up and you know there are these fanboys from Google and Apple who think oh these companies are so cool. But yeah, as I said, the marketing um, section of these companies are doing a great job in just, um, yeah, deceiving people and making them buy super expensive stuff, which is, yeah, just um, exaggerated or how can I put that? Yeah, I think exaggerated. So, um, the Trump superhero continues, these are perfect examples of what innovation and progress means today. Bezel less screens, animated emoji and super expensive features that do pretty much nothing. Even people in Africa, the poor ones, have a smartphone, some people brag about. But they fail to see that those poor people don't have proper food to eat, a health insurance, security, comfort and pretty much lack everything. Having a phone is one of the cheapest ways to create consumers, if you think about it. These poor people in Africa may not be able to pay for Netflix, buy clothes from H&M or go to the cinema, but they can watch advertising, trading their attention and so marketeers may even provide free phones for them to suck their attention through to get something from them. Trump superhero says, so Stephen, you see, the society is indeed in a very bad shape and even if it seems to be getting better, it is either an illusion or a very slow process. Neither is a solution. Okay, I think we got it. We finally understood that our society is fucked up and trade is a problem. So we agree the world is not fine, we need to intervene. What can we do? The Trump superhero now talks about a thing which might be so normal for people and they are just used to it that they might not even question it. We are talking about rules and laws because people come up, yeah, we just need some more rules, some more laws, like to companies to not dump their trash into the lake or into a river and so on. But you know, it's like um, not working. As we can see in the world, there are still trillions of problems. So laws, as we will learn, are basically for good people because the other ones are not caring about laws at all. The Trump superhero explains that in a story when he was younger and went to school, basically the school was so boring and so meaningless, also mandatory, like a prison. So these kids were just, um, yeah, fleeing out of school and class and they went to some bars because of course they couldn't go home because their parents like would not allow them to, to come home. So that's why they went to bars. 
then the school like of course noticed that and they thought okay let's build a fence so people or kids cannot um, flee from school anymore they built a fence but of course what happened was that these kids were just jumping over these fences and then going to the bars again that's what they did the school noticed that of course so they built a proper and more better fence but of course the kids could just um, flee through that one as well just making some holes and um, yeah go then to the bars again that's what they did so the school was really um, pissed off they came up with some guards and as a next um, barrier kind of but of course um, guards can be bribed and that's what the children did and yeah they went to the bars again and flew from school again the school noticed that as well and they installed now some cameras and the kids thought shit what can we do now but they figured out that if they went to the school's medical facility and got a medical paper to prove that they are sick even though they weren't they were legally obliged to let us go home so that's what they did and they faked colds and other medical needs the school now decided to change the rules for its medical facility and asked the doctors not to give any medical papers to students unless there is a real need for that. That's what they did. But the kids realized that they can fake these papers themselves. And that's what they did. The school was so pissed off. We have big and solid fences, guards patrolling, video cameras and tough medical center rules and the kids are still fleeing school. What can we do? So they started to make fun of the kids. Um, basically they um, tried to attack these children directly and punish each absentee drastically from lowering their behavioral grades that could be detrimental for those kids who wanted to become lawyers or police officers to calling the absentees names every month in front of the entire school to humiliate them and that's what they did but you know the kids realized that none of them really wanted to become lawyers or police officers and that those humiliating calls became celebrity calls for absentees that were now seen as the cool kids in school getting cheers and applause from their classmates whenever their names were called out that's what they did so there were the cool kids from the school and the uh, school now came up even with another thing they thought about um, punishing the absentees by making them repeat a school year that was um, very drastic that's what they did but the kids learned that the absentee scores were kept on a special piece of paper that only the teachers had access to and they can be nulled out or rested if you would simply circle each of them with a pen who knew that some teachers are easily bribable with money or even coffee or that there are ways for some students to get a hold of that piece of paper by making even bullying teachers to reset them and that's what they did and the school was furious and impotent it was never able to stop kids from fleeing classes regardless of the rules they put into place this mindset became so ridiculous that they even tried to stop the children from cheating when there were exams but of course the children also found ways in cheating in exams to get better grades so yeah, it was just a hopeless thing for the school and the Trump superhero says This example with the school versus students proves how even kids can break sophisticated and tough rules if they are motivated to do so The school should have asked why kids are fleeing classes in the first place and not try to stop them from doing that Of course if the school was a great place to go to and there was no competition that drives kids who only care about the grades then kids would come to school even when you put fences to not let them in so that's the thing you know also when i was in school it was so boring monotonous and 
just there was no fun in it it, it felt like a prison I, I think most of the time i was just watching out of the window and thinking about how like what is the world about what is going on why are people so poor in africa and why am i sitting here in school and have to i'm a, why am i forced to sit here basically but if the school would be fun like i think khan academy is a super cool example where kids are not forced to learn but they just can like explore different areas and fields and it's more playful and more more alive somehow so yeah we even have a book about education it's called rethinking education maybe i also do some videos about that but yeah <laughs> not this time uh, maybe also in the future so yeah this is the point like stop making the school boring and monotonous and force it onto kids but more make it fun make it interesting and then kids would enjoy going to school and would enjoy learning and yeah that's um, what life is also about right to learn more about the world and our relationship to earth and all our other fellow human beings so yeah but well we live in this trade-based society which is fucked up but yeah let's meet some of those students that we have to in today's world who do not care about any laws or any rules we will meet the mafia the terrorist the hacker the cheater and the smuggler in the next video so i look forward to the next one i say goodbye for now and as always take care and much love Thank you.